Hey guys, Ray from Green Apple Painting here, and I'm going to give you guys a quick tour, a guide, a tutorial of painting tools. So some of these tools are specifically for maybe uh, painting contractors, you won't get too much into that. Most of these are tools that you would need as the average homeowner, and uh, any kind of painting extravaganza you want to go on. So we're going to start with the most important tool that you can own, and it is a rag. Every good painter always has a rag nearby. It's almost impossible to deal with paint on a day-to-day -day basis, or even just for you guys as beginners, it's nearly impossible to deal with paint and not get a spill or get paint somewhere that you don't want. Uh, if you can keep a, a damp rag with you, and you see something on a spot of a wall that you didn't want, or even in the carpet, um, your paints today are almost all water soluble, so even if it gets in a rug, use a dry rag to get most of the liquid out. Then after you get all of that, as much of it out as you can, then apply water and you can get almost all of the paint out. But keep a rag nearby. So we're going to continue with some prep items. Uh, these are things that are invaluable to me. I'm a big guy, but I'd much rather make it as easy on myself as I can. These are sliders. Um, you lift the furniture up, slide this under the, the part that hits the floor, and uh, it's just amazing how much these things do slide. Uh, really, really heavy pieces of the furniture. You get these on there, and you can literally, literally push them with your fingers. This is just a nice big roll of plastic. This is, um, I think, about $18. And um, if you can't get all the furniture out of your room, sometimes the last thing you're going to want to do, we never do it, is put dusty drops or an old drop on a nice uh, piece of furniture or even your bed or something like that. So the plastic comes in handy. You put the plastic up there. You can throw it out and recycle it, which is what we do. This uh, next item is a drop cloth, kind of obvious. And uh, this particular one is uh, called a runner. Um, it's about four feet wide by 15 feet long. Some painters use, and even homeowners get caught up and they think, well, I've got a big room, so I'm gonna get this really big drop cloth. And then you realize that, well, I'm not gonna get the bed out, or I can't move this piece of furniture, so you can't even really lay out this really large drop cloth. These runners come in very handy, especially, like I said, if you've got a bed and you just need a little runner here, a little runner here, and something around the front, um, they're a lot more mobile than, than this very large drop cloth. Uh, so we're going to get into another prep item. This is tape. Most homeowners are going to, you know, they steer towards the blue tape. I don't like the blue tape uh, because it doesn't have the same adhesion as your basic yellow masking tape does. And the last thing you want is to spend a long time taping off your base or your edge, your edge molding, and then you realize that the tape isn't sticking, and you didn't notice it at first, but now you notice it because all the paint is getting behind there. So that's really not what you want. I like to use the yellow masking tape. If I do have a surface that I painted recently that I know is a little bit more delicate, then I'll use the blue tape. But even this tape is different because. Most of your blue tape has uh, what's called an orange peel. It's kind of rough on here, and that's the low tack stuff. This is very smooth, and um, it's kind of the telltale sign. This is a, a blue tape that still has quite a bit of adhesion to it, yet uh, it's, it's not going to pull your paint off if it's a recently painted um, surface. And this is two inch tape. You can get this in one inch or one and a half inch, two inch. And uh, same thing goes for this tape. This is the yellow masking tape. This is inch and a half. This is what I use uh, about 99% of the time. This will cover my baseboards, uh, the edges of my doors. I would stay clear of the blue, um, the blue tape. I, it, like, like I said, for me, it just really doesn't stick as well as the yellow. This, I like to do this, is a two to four. Kind of self-explanatory. Uh, it's a pole, starts out at two feet, extends to four feet. Uh, they have many different sizes. You can get a 4 to 8, a 6, an 8 to 16, 
if you're the type of person that always paints your house, uh, you don't want to pay for a painter or a contractor, this item is a real back saver. You can use this on ceilings, use this on walls. Um, if you can't get one of these or you're really, really tight on your budget, a lot of times a uh, broomstick handle has the same thread, about the same size, and they will also fit into your handles. And speaking of going to the handle, um, this is a nine inch handle, nine inch meaning the length here. And this is a cageless handle, something I prefer because it's a lot easier to clean. Uh, this one needs to be cleaned. They're made by Purdy. I was really excited when I saw them come out. Uh, I have a boring life, so hey, uh, I get excited over very silly things. So if you're gonna buy a handle, Try to find one of these at your local paint retailer. Let's get into some brushes. Uh, most homeowners are going to use something like this, which is around a two inch brush. I wouldn't get anything much smaller than a two inch or two and a half inch brush. Really, two and a half inch is kind of your ideal size. I don't use a two and a half inch very often. I use a three inch, but for homeowners, two and a half is really good. If you start going with two, or, I mean, an inch and a half or something like that is really almost pointless. You might as well use a toothbrush. Uh, but a two and a half inch brush is really nice. This is a sash brush, which means it's got the angle on it. Uh, they're really good for windows, obviously, hence the name sash. And um, kind of nice in the corners. Uh, this, on the other hand, is a three inch brush. This is um, what I use, I'd say, about 95% of the time because. For me, it holds a lot of paint. I'm very comfortable with a lot of paint, and I don't have any issues with dripping or anything like that. So this is, comes in really nice, especially on outside too. But for your basic homeowner, I would tell you to get a two and a half inch stash. It's a little bit more versatile. It's a little bit easier for you to use as well. 